Good morning to everybody. This video is entitled The Vignetti Model and Our Virtual Life. Below you will see the bibliography dealing with this argument. And this video will deal about the human Vignetti model, which explain how people can learn, memorize and behave in the absence of free will. First, the central nervous system has been genetically engineered to work as a computational machine. The physiological and biochemical mechanisms of the molecular and cellular elements of the brain exhibit a probabilistic deterministic behavior. What does probabilistic deterministic behavior mean? The chess are alley, an aleatory system. You can never predict the result. But the Galton machine is the best model example in physics of the probabilistic deterministic mechanism. You have a funnel full of balls and a, a lot of skittle. The balls are on a, uh, on a slope plane, so th the balls fall down. Each one of these balls bump on the skittle in a aleatory and um, stochastic manner, so you cannot predict whether they bump to the right or to the left. Each bow can distribute in down in the funnel at different positions which cannot pre be predicted. But if you let all the balls down, fall down, you, at the end of the process, you can see the a perfect distribution, the normal distributions of these balls along all the funnels. So, the behavior of only one element is not predictable, is probabilistic. The fall down of all the elements in number can be distributed along a deterministic, mathematically predictable way. To the left, there are 10 traces of repetitive recording of the dynamics of opening and closing of a single voltage gated sodium channel. The sodium channel open when is depolarized from minus 80 to minus 50, but the opening dynamics is aleatory. As you see, uh, the same traces are all different from the other, one of the other. Uh, if you, however, make a mean uh, of these results, you get the, the trace at, at the bottom, which is uh, exactly what we, we can reproduce with an RC circuit, uh, according a deterministic behavior of the asking oxley model. So the traces, each single sodium channel behaves as an aleatory system, but if you have 
a, an ensemble of these systems, you get a deterministic response. On the, on the right, you see uh, five red gates, which uh, means five sodium channels. When uh, the membrane is at minus 80, they are almost closed, a very few possibility to, to open is a, a very low probability of opening. So the sodium ions, which are the, the pinky balloon, can not enter very easily inside the membrane. Now, wait for uh, changing the membrane from minus 80 to minus 550, and you will see that the probability of opening of these gates is uh, much higher. It, again, the opening is much higher, the probability, but each channel open with a different dynamic from the other. So the dynamics are aleatory. But as you see, the results, when they work in ensemble, a large number of these gates favor the entrance of a large quantity of sodium ion when the membrane has been stimulated. So the membrane voltage can be changed with the um, peak of the action potential with a plus 30 millivolt. Each gate is aleatory. The ensemble of these, of many gates, are deterministic. Natural selection makes the mind emerging from the brain with two functional states. The unconscious or implicit mind, UM, whose language is made of biophysical and biochemical signals, and the conscious or explicit mind, CM, whose language is made of images, sounds, dreams, and thoughts. Thoughts are elaborated with the inner speech based on the mother tongue language, the two functional states have nothing to share with psychoanalytic definitions. Moreover, a subject can think about himself, then elaborate self-oriented emotional thoughts by using a first-person perspective, one PP. Otherwise, he can think as an external witness about others' action and then elaborate self-detached rational thoughts by using a third-person perspective. One of the most intriguing question is uh, of the recent neuroscientific, uh, the neuroscientific literature was the possibility of giving a scientific rational definition of consciousness. Chalmers called this embarrassing issue the art problem of consciousness. We have recently commented that any effort to solve the question would be groundless resting on the evidence conflict of, on the, an evident conflict of interest that would impede the human mind from defining itself our convictions holds even if this problem solving were entrusted to a scientific mind the objective and rational third person perspective is typical of course of an external observer a scientific mind UM and CM preserve information in short and long-term memory archives. Moreover, bo both UM and, and CM collaborate for cognitive and behavioral processes with an autopoietic 
aim. To do so, they reciprocally translate their languages one into the other. The aware state of the mind, however, knows neither the mechanism of translation nor the underlying UM activity. So we consider it the crucial evidence of the hard problem of consciousness. In this slide, you see how uh, our personality can grow since the early days of our life. The LTM, Long-Term Memory Archives, is like a tabula rasa that is enriched with information uh, we learn step by step. So we learn, uh, for instance, making stairs uh, to use the spoon or the another th important thing is to learn language. Inner speech is learned by mimicking the mother tongue language. At a certain time, the, the stage is called the toddler age. Uh, we refuse all the impositions of the parents and from the environment. So at that time is the famous time of, no, I don't want to do that. And that in this, this time is in the circle. And you see that uh, by this refusal, we can learn that we can make our own decisions. So the illusion of free will starts growing exactly in that time and personality and free will goes together for the rest of our life. So, TBM, the vignette model. First point, the unconscious mind, UM, reacts against an inner or outer stimulus by means of the dedicated sensory motor interface. Second point, the action execution will convey feedback signals to the brain, thus awakening the first-person perspective of the conscious mind, 1PPCM, with a few milliseconds delay. 1PPCM is unaware of the preceding UM's activity, so it deludes being the author of that reaction according to the freedom of the will, free will illusion. By analogy, in a virtual game, the player believes to control his her reactions through the avatar. Fourth point, so both senses of agency and responsibility activate self-rewarding or self-blading, depending on the reaction outcome. Lacking classic operant condition, reward and blame are action motivation incentives. So uh, the experience acquired in the preceding step will induce CM to update LTM archives by analogy in a virtual game, the player becomes aware of the avatar's experience a posteriori. The player learns the outcomes of the action and memorizes that experience in LTM with a certain delay. 
Fifth point, in the future, taking advantage of LTM updating, UM will more quickly and efficiently react against the same stimulus as in point one. It has to, from a, a priori experience to a better posterior effect. Let's make, for example, the tennis players who after many drives uh, automatize, auto, it becomes automatic. Um, the other example is a car player under the light. Uh, when green comes, uh, it, it automatically he uh, starts the car. That depends on repetitive and repetitive example, uh, examples or stimulus and uh, acqu the acquisition of uh, solid experience on how to react. So, some interesting inferences can be done in conclusion. The world as we perceive is a virtual world. TBM explains why the reality is unbeknown to our CM. We keep living in a virtual game in which CM moves as the avatar of UM, but the action decision mechanism of an avatar is always a step behind cognition. Moreover, it is known that gaming is used as psychological therapy in pathologies of different gravities, e.g. dysmorphic disorder, characterized by the obsessive idea that some aspects of the body are severely flawed, obsessive compulsive mental disorders, autism, and attempts of, at suicide. Maybe that TBM will teach us how to make the therapies based on gaming efficacious.